Here we have uh, a marsh here in Urban Groton, pretty much in the city limits. See, we got neighborhoods over there. This is a dam. So this is like a marsh dam, but you know, it's more or less a drain dam. In the far past, the water likely went up to this top tree line here, because that's about where that is. Maybe not the top tree line, but it was definitely, you know, six to seven feet higher. And I bet you some point in the past, it, uh, you know, broke and, and they, or, or they drained it, one or the other. But it used to be probably like an old uh, ice dam because people harvested ice and then they stored it in pretty much underground or insulated things so they could have ice all summer and keep it insulated or insulate meat, you know, keep it cold. This is also a nice ravine. Nice big rocks, flat rocks, with the umbilicaria. We got Smilax Rotunda Foley, a very similar forest to pretty much everything down uh, around here. Here's your mountain laurel. Here's a closer look at your umbilicaria. Can't forget the Eulata. Typical, you know, what I show you, you got your high bush blueberry, your vicinium. Various Claydonia lichens and dust lichens. White oak trees like this one here with a fair coating of Thelia hertella. Gotta love it. So this area, especially the upland, is more or less a pristine forest with very few invasives surrounded by an urban area. So I have a hunch that this area has always been native plants and has not lost its original uh, like ecotype. Like this, I want to say is old growth. This type of habitat has probably been here uh, for thousands of years. I wouldn't be surprised. And this is basically what came up from seed or has always kind of just been, you know, it was maybe chopped back a few times, but pretty much everything is the same, which is super cool. And you can also just hear the city noises. So, I mean, this is, this is like a, not even a 50 acre patch of land. It's, it's less than 25. So there's no part of it that feels uh, very um, wild. I mean, but the thing is, it's pristine. So what I mean by wild is, like, quiet. Like, there's very few areas in this preserve that are quiet. So you can see the effects of uh, pollution on the mountain walls here. You can see how blotted their leaves are and how stressed they are. So this is a fungus that affects these. It can either be done due to humidity, or it could, it's a mixer of just plant stress. It could be humidity. It could be deep shade like it's starting to get in this forest it could be uh it could be pollution it could be a whole number of things they still do flower and they still are kind of growing but i'm seeing some dieback and uh some regrowth at the bases uh, up on the slope a lot of them are much healthier uh, it just kind of depends where you are i guess um but this area is transitioning out of being a mountain laurel only forest and then probably more of like a uh like a heathland that's mixed with ferns and whatnot, and a bunch of maybe clethra. So I am seeing clethra prop up here and there up here in little patches, like we have one right there. So it's likely going to be like a clethra slope. See all those little sticky up you guys, these are all little clethras. This one's a little clethra. So it's like, a tr it's transitioning. Clethra gets about 10 feet tall and so it'll likely just kind of form patches on this ridge with little open areas with ferns and whatnot. You also get more white pines growing. There's a nice glade up there. It's a nice little valley. The forest here are underlain with a mostly granite bedrock layer. Multiple little plutons that have been kind of eroded into crags from uh, glaciers. So they're basically pretty much any upland is like a is like a pluton is a granitic dome more or less, 
and it's over uh, 350 million years old. So this is some ancient volcanic rocks, and most of the sedimentary layers have been uh, eroded away. Because uh, there is sedimentary layers in the region. It's quite diverse geologically, except it's mostly just sedimentary and volcanics. There's not up too much limestone. But there is rich areas where limestone is kind of present in small patches. So this is Ilex verticillata, or the winterberry holly, one of my favorites. The birds love to eat them, and they spread. And this one's growing in the deep shade of this granitic valley, and it gets this cool arching kind of, arching kind of flat branching pattern. It makes a wonderful bush. It's a good host plant for a lot of uh, butterflies as well. So we have another marsh. This one's being invaded by uh, invasive Phragmites australis from Europe and Asia. It's, it just takes over. But you can find occasional neat plants in between them. Very occasional. All this needs is like uh, monthly cutting and it will eventually return to native shrubs. And, or not native shrubs, but native forbs. Or hell, even semi-yearly cutting. Because there's a lot of good native forbs that can uh, create multiple generations a year. Like, you know, tons of seed. You know, it, you could uh, chop it down in, let's say, March. And then whatever grows uh, is basically what was there before. And that can set seed and grow more by the time you chop it again in, like, July. And then when you chop it in July, it can then grow it in seed again for the following year. And with time, that'll eventually eliminate this. Because these need a lot of sun. Or not a lot of sun, but uh, they need to be able to grow tall to spread and keep growing. So, being this height, uh, they're able to do that. Just sustain themselves. There's like ice falling up there. It was like, whoop. Here we have a Rubus hispida. Or swamp dewberry. And it's flush and red with the cold. These can be evergreen. Look how vibrant. There's more green one right there. Look how nice that red is. And I even, I like that kind of almost purpley color on the underside. Look at that. Isn't that nice? This is against the, uh, especially against the dark green dicranum. And these brown oak leaves. Here we have a beautiful solid dago bicolor or silver rod. It's a little freaking focus, you dumb. All right, boom, silver rod. Beautiful, solid dago bicolor. Very distinct. White flowers, and it's a golden rod or a solid dago. Silvery foliage, absolutely gorgeous. Blooms in September.